So here is what I've been working on. This uh, inspirational chat GPT quote. So it connects to Wi-Fi and it gives me an error. That happens sometimes, it says error parsing JSON, invalid input. I put some error handling in. It has to do with, as best I can figure, I notice if I change the object size or just reload it and get a smaller object, meaning less data. There we go. So just how inspiration is yours. So it, th I'm just sort of reading it. it. It doesn't, I like to be able to experiment to do interesting things. It doesn't make a lot of sense. My, there's something wrong with my crest. Also that drawing line, there's a little bit to talk about there. But <laughs> so I get back, if I type in the request and I'll show you the code where I say, it says, give me an inspirational quote. It gives me back some, un oh, there's the parsing error again. I think it's too large an ish, uh, too large of a response. I also have a, you can say max token, so how many characters you'll allow. Um, and then I make it scroll. I don't, <laughs> I'm just reading this. Uh, it, this makes no sense. So every once in a while though, it will give you an inspirational quote. So I'm not really sure what I'm kind of doing wrong. Um, I thought I'd show you kind of where I'm at. The scrolling I'll talk about real quickly. Basically what I did was I, I draw out all the text. Then what I do is I just black it out and redraw it up. But notice at the bottom of like long letters, like the Y left a, a little white bar at the bottom of the G. It, um, I obviously have to extend that so that it overwrites that with black and it makes it look like it's scrolling off the screen. That's just in a, you know, kind of a, an effect. I'm sure there's better ways to do it, but the screen is so small, I thought it'd be cool. Okay, so I changed the code a bit so that it will now keep printing quotes. Um, here it is, it's saying fetching. I think I made this timer too long. I made it eight seconds. It probably doesn't need to be that long to fetch the information. So here it does the, print it on the screen. Else if, tell me a joke, and if. So this um, is supposed to do an inspirational quote and then it'll clear the screen and then it'll fetch another one. Yeah, I definitely have something screwy in the JSON, uh, what I'm sending maybe, or how I'm interpreting it, but I think it's something about sending it. Um, it's almost like it's a mix of nude news headlines and then, yeah, look at that, stretchy. You know, yeah, it's, it's this is a work in progress for sure. Flight attendant. <laughs> is it flirting with me? That's pretty messed up. Here is the quote for the uh, chat GTP inspirational quote. Um, and well, <laughs> it doesn't fully work as I think I showed, but let's just run through the code and maybe someone can help me figure it out because I don't quite see what I'm doing wrong, but that's part of it. Um, so up at the top, I just include the usual libraries and here's uh, <clears throat> the JSON library to kind of parse the, the data from the web site the chat website um so you start you know i set up the set the character the constant variable for ssid password and then uh, here's the open ai key if you go to <clears throat> open ai and um look for the uh, i forget what the link is but you have to log in and then you can generate an api key for free and you just simply copy and paste it it's really easy uh here's just more about my uh my particular uh, ESP32 and its screen. <clears throat> um, and then let's see down here is in the setup, turning, this is all about turning on the um, screen itself. And I'm setting some text to blue in the beginning. That's where it says inspirational chat, GPT quote, exciting. And then connecting and that's more about the web um, Wi-Fi status. And then if we move down here, so here's where it kind of gets a little more interesting. So we're gonna, we're turning on the web server and we're going to um, begin here. So we're gonna to connect to this. That's that's who we're connecting to. Uh, we're gonna add a header and this bearer and the API key. So that gets us authorization, that works. I'm gonna skip some of these other ones that I kind of tested. Uh, but one thing was interesting is I was doing like say this query. So I said um, at the prompt, uh, tell me an inspirational quote, max tokens 30, meaning I think the maximum number of uh, characters to reply with. Um, and one thing I, I was just, it, 
well, it still isn't working, but it wasn't working well at all or worse. And um, so I asked the uh, API, uh, the sorry, the chat GP, GTP, hey, you know, why am I getting such kooky answers? And it responded with, um, you can set a temperature parameter that controls the level of creativity in the responses generated by the GPT model. Um, I keep getting this backwards. I think this is actually GTP uh, model. And so in this string, prompt, max tokens, and then you can say temperature, and that number will be less creative an answer, a little more standard. It won't, it won't try to be so creative. Again, it isn't working, so <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Again, looking for help. Uh, so here is a uh, response code. So we um, uh, put it in this request data. So if HTTP response, um, so we're parsing, this is actually just parsing the original query into four sections because here's prompt, colon, so that's one field, two fields, well this whole thing is field number two, and then field number three, field number four. And um, this uh, is part of the buffer size. I have to keep fiddling with it. I think I showed an example where every once in a while I'll say invalid response or something to that effect. It seems to be changing um, based on the size of the response, which makes sense. And I believe that's some buffer sizing. So that's another thing I need help with. I don't. How do I make that elastic rather than setting a number between? I've been doing anywhere between eight hundred and twelve hundred, and you know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. This this is definitely a mm, kind of workish. Eh. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, maybe we'll fly through down here. Here's how it just sort of parses out choices. And, you know, this is more some error handling because I it wasn't working initially and I could not see what was going on. So I had to add some of that. And then here's where it puts the quote back. And then part of it is I, I really wanted it to scroll because the screen is so small that I have, as you saw. So here we sort of get the height and size of the quote. And basically what this does is it prints this, uh, the code, then it moves it up a little and prints black kind of over what used to be there. Oh, here we go, so black and white. So it just kind of keeps printing the same lines, but moving them up a few pixels each time and drawing black over the old pixel. So it kind of takes it and it looks like it's moving. It gives the illusion of it. Um, I thought that was neat and I kind of always wanted to do that. So that works pretty well, <laughs> as you saw. I'm off a little bit and it leaves like um, letters that have lower lines to them, like, uh, like the letter Y or P or Q that has a, an extension down beyond what I've set aside to overwrite leaves a little white dot behind and it makes it look like these streaks. Kind of funny. And then there's no void loop. That brings us to the next script, uh, which this one is going to do multiple quotes. Uh, the top is the same. We just looked at that. This is all the same. Air handling. Uh, all the same, and then we get into the loop, and you're going to see it kind of repeats, uh, <laughs> pardon the pun here, it repeats the code from above, um, so it does it once up above, and then it puts it into this loop and keeps running it over and over. Um, you know, I guess I don't love the way this works, and it's kind of not super useful. Uh, well, it could be kind of fun. I did see a project, and I should put it in the link. Someone did something like this, but they also had an audio input so they could talk to it. It would do voice translation and then forward that to the API. So you could have it, you know, wear it on your wrist and you could ask this um, chat GTP questions. Uh, that was that was kind of cool. And it would respond back. So it wasn't kind of a canned, hey, give me an inspirational quote or what's the weather today or things like that. Kind of neat. So just for fun, I thought I'd ask, you know, tell me the what, you know, tell me what the weather's like in Boston, Mass right now. And I'm still getting kooky responses, which really means I don't have, oh, I didn't change that piece, but um, that I'm not parsing it. I want to boot up. <laughs> okay, whatever that was. It was at least saying Boston, Mass before. So I changed it code, not that part, but is it warm and sunny or rainy thunder upset stomachs? Means figured out and I... <laughs> okay, let's reboot. Well, I asked it to tell me the weather, what the weather's like in Boston right now, and it it 
it was saying something about Boston, but oh, look at that. 